guys that or, or gals that that can just be by themselves, or do you need team players? Um, what KPIs are important? Are you looking for more efficiency type KPIs like service level, handle time, um, abandoned percentage, or are you looking for more kind of servicey sentiment scores and QA and, and, and CSAT type scores? Um, now a lot of times those intertwine, right? But you know what are you really putting a little bit more focus on, and what should you be putting a little bit more focus on? And then I'm going to skip to kind of the, the, the last two is what's the environment on the floor? Um, and again, most of us are at home. So we're gonna, we're gonna kind of change that to how are we treating our at home guys? And what is our processes and procedures for engaging and talking to them? And I'm gonna get into that later. Um, are you kind of a, hey, we do a morning meeting and then if anybody screws up, we let them know? Or is there constant interaction throughout the day uh, based on if somebody's doing things good or bad? Um, and then how do we deal with that? And then the last piece that a lot of people don't think about, and you see this in a lot of call centers, is the reps see everything. The supervisors or your middle management or your team leads, whatever you call them, right? they're the ones that really set the tempo. So if you have supervisors that are talking down on other supervisors, if there's, there's clicky things that are happening on the floor with Janie's supervisor and Joe's supervisor doesn't like Susie, um, that's going to be a real big issue in, in kind of some of the things that, that are going to happen on the floor from a culture standpoint. So some of the things to kind of look out for there. So these are some questions. So you're going to kind of, I just want you to think about these. And, and again, we're not going to come to an answer for your center right now, but some of the things that how you want your center to operate. And then what I like to do, and I think has been very helpful is it break that down into two or three words that become kind of the mantra for your call center. Something that you can get in your training, um, you can talk about every single day that reps can start to talk about and reps understand the importance. And so what you want with these words is the foundational kind of layer that covers as much as you possibly can when it comes to KPIs, when it comes to attendance policy, when it comes to uh, what type of, of, of interactions do we have on the call center floor? So instead of kind of picking and choosing, hey, Susie, you need to have, uh, you know, your, your handle time needs to be under six minutes. Um, I noticed your after call work is over 40 seconds. You know, we can talk about that. But what we want to talk about is, is kind of more foundational things that take care of that. And I know that's probably confusing, but I think it'll get clear here as we go. So some examples that I've seen and, and that, that call centers have used after we've kind of talked about this are you know, security and service, right? Those are kind of the things that get, get quote unquote put on the wall, right? And the reps and supervisors talk about, you know, sales and, and sales with a smile, hit the numbers, just do it. Um, so there's a wide range of things, you know, from, from being very uh, proactive when it comes to sales and numbers to things that swing maybe the opposite way to, you know, very service oriented, care about, don't really care about handle time, care about customer sentiment and CSAT the most. And then most of you are in the middle of that, right? I got to hit my numbers, but I got to have high quality too. So that's where we thought. And with having so many different clients and so many different channels, you know, we think that ours works really well. <laughs> More than happy if you'd like to steal it. Um, but ours is attitude and effort, right? So when we talk about attitude and effort, we said, you know, attitude can really deal with our sales and service that we need to do. Being in a BPO, being in any call center, attendance and turnover is huge. So we know we wanted to, to really hit those or, or that topic as well. So we said, okay, if we can figure out, you know, how to, how to really integrate our attitude and effort mantra into our call center, I think some of these, or, or this is all going to be taking care of itself. So, we got deep into this and said, you know, currently, you know, over the last, this has evolved over the last probably five to seven years. We're currently not hiring off resumes. Um, now we're going to look at your resume and we're going to check it, but it's not the driving force. Uh, we're going to hire individuals that, that bring great attitude and give us, that are going to give us effort. And I'm going to show you how we do that from a hiring standpoint. We don't promote our top salespeople or the people with the best CSAT scores or QA scores. We promote those that are on the floor that give the best attitude and effort. And third, we don't incent our top sales or service reps. We incent reps that are giving great attitude and effort. 
Now, most of the time, the cool thing about this is all that is the same, right? So if you are, you're a top sales or QA score person, you're probably giving attitude and effort, right? Um, if you are really, really doing a great job with your, your, your sentiment scores and you're showing up every day and your, your efforts, that, all that kind of ties into you know, this overall arching theme of attitude and effort. So I think that's what's really important. When we do a, a rep uh, meeting and we talk and we sit down and we see what their KPI stats are, you know, we, we talk first about effort, right? Hey, are we giving full effort on this? Remember we trained on this? Because if we give full effort, I know that these stats are gonna come up. Instead of saying, hey, your stats are low, we need to get your handle time under six minutes. Um, so we frame it a little bit softer and frame it in a way that I think, you know, each rep can say, wow, I could just have to give a little bit more effort. Oh, and I have to just change my attitude a little bit other than, oh my God, I gotta change this. I gotta make sure that I'm on a, I'm on a plan right now to come into work because I've been I called off two times this week. Um, you know, I, 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 my QA scores are low, my CSAT scores are low, and, and all that kind of just overwhelms them. Uh, but if we can kind of just, you know, frame it as, hey, we gotta give more effort, and these are some of the things you need to work on. It's been a huge difference for, for how we operate. So I get a lot, I get this question all the time is, you know, how do you measure this? You know, that's great. But again, we're talking the non-tangible culture thing and how do we make it tangible? So what we have done is we picked four areas of our call center business that we wanted to, to see if we could figure out how we can use attitude and effort. And one was on our hiring, two was in how we pay, right? How we pay, how we incent, how we give commissions. Uh, we call it proficiency pay, how we do that, how we're actually doing the management with our supervisors and what type of environment are we, do we have, right? So if we, can, if we can figure out how to install this attitude and effort type culture into these four kind of core concepts, we, we thought we are gonna have something pretty special. So what we ended up doing is that. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we did both of those things, um, which I think is pretty cool. And for us, and for call centers that can figure this out, I think it's an absolute total weapon um, when it comes to servicing your customers, when it comes to turnover, when it comes to having reps that enjoy what they're doing, because there's now a focus on what they need to do and it's simple, right? It's not just saying, hey, we gotta do these eight things. It's no, we gotta do these two things and under those come these things. So I think that's, it, it kind of ties things into a bow a little bit easier when you're kind of talking about what a rep needs to do. So let's talk about attitude. This was the most, well, the most difficult piece of this was how do you incent? How do you pay your reps to have a good attitude? And that has not been able to really be done for us other than in the past three or four years when we've implemented advanced speech analytics. So every single client of ours has, is on our analytics platform and we actually are paying all of our customer service reps, we're actually incenting them off of positive customer sentiment, right? And positive agent sentiment. So every single day, they're looking at where they are from their tone, right? From their word choice. And we can actually, we're actually paying our reps more to have a good attitude. So we've actually found a way to really make that a, a tangible way to pay reps, which is, has been the number one biggest change for the, for the good in our contact center. Um, is being able to, to use speech analytics, not just you know, talk to clients about, hey, here's the trending keywords and, and you know, here's your customer sentiment and we're working on this, but to, to show, number one, that our reps are using proper tone, that they're treating customers right, but two, that we're gonna pay you more if you're doing that. From the hiring standpoint, I mean, we've come up with about 15 different questions, so our interviews are a little bit longer and we're just trying to have a conversation with you. We're trying to get you to laugh. Um, we're trying to, to get to your personality. We're looking for team players. You know, we know exactly kind of what we want from that standpoint. And so there's many people in here. So there's probably, from the outsourcing side, there's, there's about three contact centers. Dial America's here. There's, a, there's another independent BPO. There's us here. And then there's a lot of internal call centers as well. Um, so you, you, we very easily can get reps that have worked their whole life in the call center industry 
Um, and maybe have done a really good job, but they don't fit what we're looking for from an attitude standpoint, just by that interview, by that conversation. Um, you know, wanted to be not a team player, just wants to go off into the corner and kind of do their own thing. And we don't want that. Um, so they don't, they're not a good fit. From a management standpoint, there's a lot of different things that we do, but the number one thing, and I wanted to do this, and I'm gonna go deeper into this, is, is we control the first 30 minutes of the shift where we actually assess attitude. Supervisors um, have to greet reps, and this is on the, and we're gonna talk from the work from home environment as well. Um, they're kind of taking the temperature. We don't allow poor attitudes. So you know, everyone has that rep that comes in and is like, oh, this is terrible, it's Monday, I don't wanna be here. Right? A lot of you guys just say, hey, come on, turn it around. No, we don't let them on the floor. Now, we don't send them home, um, but when they were in house, you know, they would go, we'd say, hey, go get a cup of coffee. We'd have our, you know, go into the break room, go relax, but I can't let you on the floor until, you know, we have a, a good attitude. That starts to resonate with everyone if you're very consistent with it. When it comes to the environment, we believe in fun no matter what. So even if we have a conservative, we're working for financial services clients, insurance clients, um, we're trying to play games, some type of game at all time. Every supervisor has, a, uh, has to have a game going on. Um, when we were brick and mortar, we had a book of, I think it got up to about 120 games to play. And the reps would come up with these games, the supervisors would come up with the games. I'm gonna give you some of these um, as we go, there's also a couple podcast episodes where I dedicate the whole podcast episode into games that we play in the call center. And I'm going to get into some of the games that we're playing from work from 